Hi students, welcome to another day of learning. Today, we will be discussing Grade 10 Science Module 4 entitled, Break It to Me Gently. Now what is in store for us in this module? The most essential learning competency to be discussed today is to describe the different types of plate boundaries. As for the specific objectives, we would like to first identify and describe the different types of plate boundaries. Next, identify the type of plate boundary associated with each major lithospheric plate. Third, Describe the movement in each type of plate boundary. And lastly, relate each type of plate with the stress on rocks. Are you ready? Without further ado, let's start! Let's start our discussion with a short recap of what we have discussed in the past three weeks. So here we can see a map showing the different lithospheric plates. We can see different geologic occurrences. The triangles show the volcanoes. The yellow circles show the hotspots, which are also volcanoes. And then the violet part shows the ring of fire. And the grape areas show the places with earthquakes. As we can see on the map, most of these geologic occurrences happen at the same place and these places are called the plate boundaries. Next, we know that the lithosphere is composed of the crust and the upper mantle which in this picture we can see in this area. The lithosphere rides or is found above the asthenosphere which is a plastic layer of the earth. This layer of the earth is still part of the mantle which is found above the earth's core. Now let's go to the plate tectonics theory. What is the plate tectonics theory? This is very easy to remember because the plate tectonics theory is somehow a summary of what we have discussed in the previous weeks. So the plate tectonics theory states that the uppermost mantle along with the overlying crust, behaves as a strong, rigid layer called the lithosphere. Now, let's review some concepts that we have discussed about the lithosphere. Can you still remember the two types of lithosphere? Correct! The two types of lithosphere are the continental lithosphere, and the oceanic lithosphere. Also, if we try to compare the continental lithosphere from the oceanic lithosphere, we know that the continental lithosphere is thicker than oceanic. However, oceanic lithosphere is denser than continental lithosphere. Also, Continental lithosphere is older than oceanic lithosphere and continental lithosphere is mostly made up of granitic or granite rocks whereas your oceanic lithosphere is made up of basalt or basaltic rocks. I hope you can still remember this because this has been discussed in Module 1. Now let's go to the concept of convection currents. Do you have any idea on what convection currents are? Convection currents are formed by rising of hot magma near the core towards the surface, while cooler magma near the crust sinks, setting up a current that causes the plates to move. We know that the lithospheric plates are constantly moving, and there must be something below those plates that fuels them or that causes them to move and these are the convection currents now why do convection currents happen we will know in a few minutes but then to give you an idea on what convection currents are 
I have a picture here. Okay, so in this picture, this brown part is the lithosphere which rides above the asthenosphere. This was already discussed a while ago. And the asthenosphere, which is part of the mantle, is constantly moving. You can see there arrows. And these arrows represent the movement of the fluid inside the mantle. Now, why does this move? It's because of the core. The question is, how does the core create convection currents? As we all know, the crust, the mantle, and the core, being the basic layers of the Earth, have different temperatures. The nearer the layer to the Earth's center, the hotter will be the layer. So therefore, among the three, the core is the hottest. So what is the effect of this to the surrounding magma or the surrounding fluid? So take note that since the core is hot, that means that the magma or the fluid that is nearer the core heats up faster compared to the magma nearer the lithosphere. So therefore, since this part becomes hotter faster than this part, the tendency is for it to move up. And once it moves up, it pushes the existing magma on top which goes down and the cycle goes on and on this concept is very similar to what we have been observing when you are heating your water using a kettle or air conditioning remember the concept hot air rises the same concept applies to any type of fluid so the hotter fluid goes up and then the fluid on top which is um, colder relatively colder would go down and the cycle goes on and on just like what you can see in the screen being flashed to you right now next i will be showing you a short demonstration of how convection currents look like So as we can see at the bigger level, geologists believe that convection is what makes tectonic plates move. The movements, whether the movement is towards each other, away from each other, or sliding past each other, it would be because something below those plates are making them move. And then, in this video that I will be showing shortly, we are trying to demonstrate how the convection currents happen. So here in the setup, we have a beaker. Inside the beaker, we have a cooking oil. And then we have pulverized chalk, preferably orange or color red. And we also have a wire gauze to protect the beaker. And then a tripod and an alcohol lamp. So the alcohol lamp has, of course, fire. And then this fire is like a representation of the Earth's core. Because in this setup, it is the one that provides the heat which technically will be transferred to the beaker and then to the oil and then to the chalk. Now let's see what happens. So after some time, once the oil boils, the chalk particles would move up. Can you see them? And then, after they go up, there will be a tendency for them to also go down. So, the movement is like cycle. So, the particles of the chalk will not remain on top. They will also go down. So, as a result, whatever is on top would move depending on the movement below the lithosphere. Okay? Any questions? So if there are no questions, let's move to the next slide. Let's go to the types of plate boundaries. A while ago, I have introduced to you some movements which is either away from each other, towards each other, and sliding past each other. 
So we have a formal definition for these types of plate boundaries. And you can see them right now. So the first one, moving apart, is called divergent boundary. And then the second one, moving towards each other, is the convergent boundary. And when the plates are sliding past each other, we have the transform fault boundaries. Now, for each type of plate boundary, there is a specific type of um, result that would occur with each type. However, uh, we will not be discussing them in focus this time because modules 5, 6, and 7 will take care of them. So for now, it's enough for us to know the difference among the three. Again, divergent boundary moving away from each other. Convergent boundary, moving towards each other. And transform fault boundary, moving or sliding past each other. In your module, it was also stated that a divergent boundary would create a rock stretching which is also called tension stress. So why is it called tension stress? Because it's like you are pulling a rubber band and then it causes tension on the lithosphere as for the convergent plate boundary um, the term used here in your module is compression stress so again why compression with the term compression the land or the lithosphere is being compressed because the plates would be moving towards each other now, as for the case of transform fault boundary, we call this shear stress. Okay? So, any questions about the three types of plate boundaries? Okay, none. So, if there are no questions, let's go to the map of the plates. In this map, you can see the different tectonic plates with arrows in them. So with this, you can already identify which are convergent boundaries, which are divergent boundaries, and which are transform fault boundaries. For example, the Eurasian plate and the North American plate are examples of plates with a divergent boundary in them. Now, why divergent boundary? Because of the arrows that are moving away from each other. Okay, so can you name another set of plates wherein there is a divergent boundary in between them? Okay, so another example would be South American plate and African plate. Now, let's go to convergent plate boundary. Remember, a convergent plate boundary would have the plates moving towards each other. So, can you identify two plates wherein the movement is towards each other or moving towards each other? Okay, very good. Well, we have the Philippine plate and the Pacific plate. Can you see another set of plates? There's a lot of example in this map. So we also have Eurasian plate and Philippine plate. We also have Indian plate and Eurasian plate. Okay, and a lot more. Now finally, can you spot two plates wherein the boundary is a transform fault boundary? That's right. So we have the Pacific plate in this part of the Pacific Plate and the North American Plate. So, I hope you have understood the difference among the three types of plates and I hope these concepts that we have discussed now can help you answer the remaining parts of your module, namely the check your understanding, the post-test, and the reflection. So, if there are no more questions, I would like to thank you for taking time to watch this video. 
and I hope I have somehow helped you understand this lesson more. Till our next learning session, bye!